Variety Level 7. I hear it's amazing. I'm famous purple stuffed worm in flat jaw space with the tuning flap. Does a raw blink on the parent. I need scissors. 61. Snake. Snake. What? It's a snake. I'm a badger. I'm Welcome to episode 17 uh, for January 19th, 2013, as we are doing our very glitchy show. In more ways than one, we may have technical difficulties today, as we're attempting to do something we've never done before. And unfortunately, that's not as cool as it sounds. Uh, Mike's joining me here at the studio, air quotes. <laughs> so uh, we're having to rig our computer situation up a little differently. So we have two mics going on here, all three if you include the one in the chair. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, Grover can't join us because he lives a little further away. Only about five states or so. <laughs> Only. <laughs> Only. <laughs> so, I didn't introduce anybody. I just went carried away going on about technical difficulties. But yes, I'm Chris. This is Mike. Hello. And this is Grover. Hello. Before we get started, a special thanks to longplays.org for all their help getting us our video footage and to galaxypugs.com where you can get on their servers for stuff like Minecraft and Unreal tournaments. Uh, they hold tournaments too. And they also are home for the Printycast forums. And don't forget Grover's channel where you can watch him play uh, all sorts of LPs and Game of the Week stuff. Not so much lately, but he'll get back on the ball soon enough. Mm-hmm. It sounded like an insult, didn't it? <laughs> well, it's just it's just well, been a bad couple weeks, Jesus. You know, playing glitches and glitches and issues popping pain. on you. And all that can wait. So what have we been playing this week? Just get right into this show before I glitch out the show worse. All I've been playing is uh, Earthbound, which I, I did a couple episodes this week. Mm-hmm. And I forgot some parts of that game, which just makes it more awesome when I remember. <laughs> Uh, at the last video, I made it to Saturn Village, which is arguably my favorite part in the whole game. I love the Saturn Village We've area. We built Groove! Hi-ho, me and Mr. Saturn! This place are our Mr. Saturn! I, I just can't help when the, the Saturn people talk. The Mr. Saturn talk that I exaggerate my voice, which I started doing in the video immediately. <laughs> I forgot how net speak they are. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> And I've also been playing Minecraft Be the Beast still. And I have, I think I mentioned last week that I lost my Let's Play world and made a new one. Mm-hmm. And wow, that sucks when that happens. You don't realize how much it sucks until you don't have any of your machines. So, yeah, there, there's scratch. that. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's it. I haven't did anything. I haven't did any other games. How about you, Mike? Well, I started Darksiders 2 uh, earlier in the week, but I only played it past that first part of the game when you first meet Thane, and I beat him, which I don't, I'm not sure if I was supposed to beat him that early, because if he hits you just one time that early in the game, he calls the fight because your health is already way past, you know, half dead. So, and you're not supposed to be able to be killed by him. So he hits you one time, he calls the fight. He's like, oh, you can't stand up to me. Well, I, I ended up doing it until I was able to dodge all of his attacks and actually beat him. So I'm not sure if most people play it that way. Um, Do you get a trophy for that? No, I, um, well, you know, I don't know. I don't, to be honest, I don't pay a lot of attention to <laughs> trophies because they pop up in the right yeah. corner in a very small box, so they're not as easy to see as when you get an achievement in Xbox. So, But I played that, and uh, really, other than World of Warcraft, I really haven't played that much, except for when we were playing the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 out here. Yep, and that's not far from the case with me. I've got quite a few hours on the Minecraft uh, city that I work with, but other than that, I cannot think of a single thing until the last couple of days where he played some really shameful <laughs> rounds of Marvel and uh, I don't know if my reflexes are getting really bad because I cannot blame the controller for what was going on. There was random jumps and I would sit there holding back and there would still be no blocking and I don't know. It was craziness. So I did really, really horrible. I think I won one match out of 12, 15. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And some of those were near perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so... I feel bad. I'm supposed to be the fighting gang officer, and I totally got owned. But Well, to be fair, I was trying to be really competitive when the game first came out. That's true. You played a lot of online. I just played yeah. the computer. <laughs> And uh, other than that, last night I got my first hands-on with a 3DS with some Laz Oot, you know, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It's gorgeous. It actually works a lot better than I expected it to, even though I heard it was fine. But I was having some weird double vision problems that only got worse. There was like four of everything by the time I got done with it, which, speaking of forgetting how to play games, man, I got lost a couple of times in the Deku tree. That's been a while. But there may be a lot of games I'll be getting into for this next week because I got a whole boatload of stuff uh, between Mike's birthday gift for me, which is the collector's edition of Soul Calibur V, which has got to be the coolest case I've ever seen. That thing looks so much like a book. Even feeling the edges of it feels like paper. That's really nice. And then picked up a whole bunch of used and new games like uh, Mortal Kombat, the complete edition, Infinite Undiscovery, which is one of the weirdest names ever, Enchanted Arms, Record of Agoras Zero, Record of Agoras War Zero? I don't remember. And uh, the Persona 4 Arena. So it got me a lot of fighting games and a lot of role 
playing games, so maybe it'll get me back to playing my Xbox. It's been sitting over there neglected. At least yours works. Mine has the ring of death for the past two years. Uh, that's what happened to my first one. I had that happen to mine, too. I'm staring at it now longingly, but that's okay. I guess game news? Ah, uh, game news. Game news. So an addendum to the Fallout 4 rumor last week, uh, we'll add one more. Fallout publisher Bethesda is trademarking a television series set in a post-nuclear apocalyptic world. Da. Does this mean for a Fallout TV series? Uh, I don't really think so, but it isn't impossible either because Bethesda has neither confirmed or denied this rumor yet. I don't even... I don't know. <laughs> On the plus side, Bethesda has said uh, that the PS3 Skyrim fans are finally going to get what they've been promising, that all three expansions are supposed to release in February. And likewise, the PC will get the Dragonborn on February 5th via Steam. Really? <laughs> yes. Because the 6th is my birthday. Yeah. Yeah, very, very close. Presents. And speaking of addendums, the comments made by LaPierre, you know, the NRA spokesman, or vice president, anyway, recently about uh, violent games is coming back to bite him a little bit, as apparently the government discovered an iOS game that was just released a few days ago. In the game's defense, it is largely an educational tool with facts about guns and laws and safety tips and similar educational things, but the fact remains that you can take real-world guns to virtual shooting ranges and use it as a touch screen to shoot targets. And a lot of these are semi-full automatic weapons that you <laughs> unlock by paying for them with real money. So it's certainly a matter of opinion if such things are in bad taste, considering the release date was almost exactly one month after the shootings in Sandy Hook, or if the game's release spells hypocrisy after the group's attack of video games as of late. So this was further fueled by the fact that the game was rated ages 4 and up originally before New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg railed on the game and had Apple raise its uh, age to 12 and up at where it stands now. Disney has launched its plans for a brand new toy series that will be bringing action figures that can be placed on devices that let you play the characters on a special video game. If this sounds familiar, that's because it is. Just last week we mentioned how Activision Skylander series had made a giant chunk of cash from their idea. $500 million in two years, I reiterate. So of course Disney would hop on the bandwagon similar to that with a similar system to that with their am I repeating myself? With a giant archive of characters they could dip into not including Marvel and Lucas films that they own now. So it's basically two different play modes one with a playset tied to each character with activities and missions that are, you can kind of piece together the world depending on which of these that you actually pick up and a toy box mode that's not too dissimilar to the recent Toy Story game or even some comparisons to Little Big Planet where you can make your own objectives make your own worlds play your characters around on them so you can basically players online, make Minecraft adventures style maps, that sort of thing. So it could be really interesting, but uh, Activision surprisingly isn't crying foul about this. You know, they're not people who usually take the stuff lightly, but they're welcoming the com competition and feeling quite flattered that an industry giant would use one of their ideas. And uh, speaking of Minecraft, Minecraft Snapshot 13W03A. But that's right, we're seeing a regular stream of Minecraft updates lately, and here's what's new this week. A new block called the Dropper, which functions similar to the Dispenser, only it doesn't fire, it just, you know, drops items. A couple of monsters are more difficult, including the zombie can now when it's set on fire, it can actually set you on fire. And the skeleton archers will now shoot faster as you're closer. <laughs> to make those skeletons buttons. harder. Yes. <laughs> Minecart hoppers, which seems really odd at first, but there's a lot of potential for it if they include more variety in how it functions. Right now it's kind of beta eyes, so. And you can also construct player detecting commands with the command block and comparators. So, say a player's in a certain distance of a door, door automatically pops open. And the really cool addition of putting the texture pack mods in the actual game options rather than the start screen, meaning you can change your texture packs in-game. Hooray! That's quite awesome. AMD hasn't been doing so hot since the whole Intel i5 and i7 cores have been taking over the market, and NVIDIA's been having the lion's share of itself over the graphics card and things, but AMD had scored all three of the next-gen consoles, which is keeping it in business, but we may have found out why all of this has kind of happened, as four former AMD employees have been accused of taking over 10,000, some reports say as many as 150,000 files of the company's secrets and design documents and handing them over to NVIDIA. And Rock, oh. former AMD vice president and the spearhead of the console work, Robert Feldstein, is among those listed and in the lawsuit. The fact that he now works for NVIDIA likely does not help his case any. <laughs> the other three were managers at AMD. I'm not sure what their current work status is. Corporate espionage is bad. Oh yes, especially one that big. Yeah. yeah. And Silicon Knights' 2008 action RPG flop to human has been officially pulled from the Xbox marketplace as the game's website has nearly been completely wiped of all content and likely to be removed entirely after a court ruling last November November, calling for the game to cease production and distribution. Oddly enough, I didn't hear about this back then. But the lawsuit was filed by Epic Games, creator of the Unreal Engine the game ran on. It is highly speculated that Silicon Knights has not been paying up their royalties to Epic.
Epic is what this is all about. So yeah, somebody makes a game engine, you make a game on it, and then you don't pay them for the engine. That can cause problems. Mm -hmm. And while Too Human didn't do very well, it did make enough money because there was a lot of hype behind it. I bet they made a lot of money because they didn't pay their royalties. (laughs) You think this will make anybody's copy of Too Human that they actually do have more valuable? Very possible, because when I was reading up on this, there was a lot of rumors that uh, there were several groups that were calling for the game to be returned and burned, destroyed. Mm. I mean, that seems kind of extreme to me. Sorry, I had a chalupa, and it's kind of bubbling in my belly. (laughs) And I'm Gas Powered Games, known for Dungeon Siege and Supreme Commander series, has laid off a substantial number of their staff in just days after launching a Kickstarter campaign for an action RPG RTS game called Wild Man that, as of today, is just slightly under a quarter of its asking pledges, with almost a month still left to go. CEO Chris Taylor has stated that he's betting it all on the success of this game, saying that he's in it for all or nothing. So, if this does not take off for them, and it's not just the Kickstarter, it's the sales of the game, too. If this does not succeed for them, this could be the end of Gas Powered Games, too. Adding another to that list. And adding one more to the growing list of people with layoffs, UK developer Codemasters, famed for its racing titles, has also laid off about one-sixth of its workers, which is about 80 people, as part of a company restructuring program. (sighs) Good God! (laughs) You know... The, the gaming market was probably one of the last affected by the economy, but we're sure seeing it this last year. Oh, yeah. And here's an oddity. Uh, the Sundance Film Festival is one of two, the other being Cannes, film festivals that are considered the indie industry's biggest. And guess who's going to be at Sundance this year? Nintendo! Where it will host several events and showcase its Wii U. Unusual business practice, or does Nintendo know something we don't? I don't know if Nintendo being indie, but you know, the way they are anymore, it just seems like they're the underdog. Yeah, it's kind of true. I don't suppose they're trying to appeal to the hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nintendo's not done with the unusual business practices either, as they also released a uh, merger of the console and the handheld. Eh. He's frozen in carbonite. <laughs> Fail! Carbonite. Handheld. Oh, I okay. got it. <laughs> Just recently merged the console and handheld development teams that will take effect at the end of the month. The two teams will be working side by side from here on in in the brand new $300 million research and development facility in Kyoto, Japan. This could be the result of the less than desired sales of both the 3DS and the Wii U, but uh, it could also be attempted consolidation and idea pooling to make their hardware all the stronger. So we shall see. Maybe what? they'll make a Pokemon game that's not for a damn hammer. <laughs> Never! Not unless yeah. it has something to do with Pokemon Stadium. Oh, God. <laughs> Riot Games is altering up their system as they adopt a system more reminiscent of StarCraft II's ladder system. I said system three times in that sentence. The idea is to prove milestones and manageable goals you can strive to achieve at your skill level. Okay. Through leagues, we can move away from focusing on single number as the core identicator of a player's skill, like a leveling system, and instead move towards something more compelling. Competition on a small ladder with a relatable number of opponents. Yeah, this is the glitch episode, all right. Speaking of glitches, a reminder for all MSN Live messengers that uh, Microsoft is bumping the service very soon, and you're all going to have to switch over to Skype, but they're linking all your former accounts to Skype, so that's not all bad. People still use that? Wow. <laughs> and again, I still use AIM, so... Yep. I have some news in the form of Diablo 3, and as well as World of Warcraft in a bit. Uh, Diablo 3's game director, Jay Wilson, has actually stepped down, citing that he feels that his creativity is best spent elsewhere. It's paraphrasing. Some fans are heralding this as the possibility of someone else taking over to direct the game more towards Diablo 2's roots, which is where most people wanted it to go. Mm-hmm. And other fans who actually really liked Diablo 3 and the kind of simplicity that it brought to Diablo 2's somewhat overwhelming game design are a bit sad. Uh, I personally think he's going to be working on Project Titan because it is an MMO project. And say what you will about Jay Wilson's designs for Diablo 3, if Diablo 3 was an MMO, it would be incredibly successful. Very likely. So he is he has said that he is going to be working on a different project at Blizzard on an on an undisclosed role. So I just have a feeling it's gonna be Titan. What else has been mentioned so far? Yeah, nothing has. No not unless he goes to Heart of the Swarm and that team's already put together, so mm-hmm. Also, uh, PvP is getting changed in World of Warcraft, or rather, the way that you access the high-end gear through the PvP system. Uh, anybody who's done PvP is familiar with how you get locked out of buying certain gear until you achieve a rating that they feel warrants you to have that gear. But what a lot of people they discovered are doing is they're 
putting their best effort into the first couple of weeks or a month or so of the season to get that really good gear, and then they're just participating minimally so that they don't drop in rating later. Mm -hmm. They say that's really bad for PvP because it, it hurts other players' abilities to get up to that rating as well. So all ratings are being removed from PvP gear. And there's a big, long development post on uh, Blizzard's website for World of Warcraft as well as MMO Champion. So if you're interested in the PvP changes, because there are a number of them, uh, go check those out at MMO Champion or uh, World of Warcraft's website. It doesn't sound like a small update at all. No, it's not. It's going to remove raiding entirely, which was a huge block for me personally getting gear because I'm not that good at PvP. <laughs> So it's gonna, I hated that too when I used to do it. Yeah, it's going to be based on how how much PvP you do. You're going to have a uh, the conquest points, which are like the valor points from raiding, except it's for PvP gear. Well, how many of those you've earned in the season determines when you can buy the gear. So it's not going to be determined by raiding. It's going to be determined by participation. And that's all for World of Warcraft and Diablo 3. SimCity closed beta starts this upcoming weekend from the 20th to the 28th that you can sign up for on the game's beta page as long as you have an Origin account. The beta apparently lets you play for an hour's worth of the game, but I would imagine that's one of those demo clocks where you can replay the first hour again and again for the duration of the beta. But who knows? Still slated for release on March 5th at this point, with its very unpopular always on DRM, the stuff game companies typically use to strictly police pirating and usually fails more than intend to. But yes, it's getting closer. It's not a beta, it's a f demo. It's kind of a beta because it is still closed. You have to sign up for it. I, I signed up for it ages ago. Ages ago. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think July. So, what do you actually, th way uh, earlier than that. Um, Hopefully nothing is wrong with the game after an hour worth of play. <laughs> what are they thinking? Probably they don't have some of the later advancements in yet, and so they're trying to keep people from getting that far. I don't know. I guess. But you'd think that they'd have like a demo copy where they just remove some of that, but... It's mostly a stress test, I'm sure. It, it's probably just a stress test. They don't care whether everything's to users liking. And lastly, after 128 days in a Greek prison, those Arma 2 devs that we've mentioned way back are finally home after $12,000 in bail. That's about $6,000 a piece. The trial is still on, however, and a 20-year prison sentence looms over them as if they are found guilty of the military spying they've been accused of by the Greek government as they were doing research in Greece for the upcoming Arma 3. And our game releases include, well, DMC comes out for the PC this week. That is the Devil May Cry prequel reboot thing. As yet other Sims 3 expansion pack. But best of all, the long-awaited Pokemon meets Studio Ghibli RPG Feast for the Eyes. Nino Kuni comes out to the PS3. And then there's that little thing called Temple Run 2 that's supposed to happen. That's an iOS thing, though. I'm not really on the ball with that. Everybody knows Angry Birds, but I've not heard about this Temple Run thing until, like, last month. I played a little bit of it. One of my first experiences with an iPhone was to play Temple Temple Run, just to see how the screen worked and stuff. It's kind of a fairly simple game. There's a lot of knockoffs. Uh, the movie Brave actually has its own version of Temple Run. <laughs> I can see that. Then we'll get on to our topic this week, which is game glitches in pretty much all its forms. We're just going to go nuts here. We don't really have a standard format this week. but And even our footage, I'm, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be getting a lot of this because it's not game trailers, and some of these glitches are really hard to recreate. Debating on how to get this one, we'll see what the final outcome is. But yeah, where do we even start on this one? It's it's a big. What do you guys remember for your first game glitch? Mm, the one I caused or the one <laughs> that I ended up in? The uh, the first the glitch I can remember that I remember fondly because it happened all the time was the old Nintendo was where the graphics just went nuts. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's the first one, yep, yep. and uh, then glitches that happen once and never happen again. Yep. I've had that where in Mario one time the Mario became invisible and I continued playing and ended up dying because I couldn't see Mario. I restarted expecting Mario to be invisible just to play for fun, but Mario was invisible and never happen again. So those kind of ones. Uh, Space Invaders is probably as far back as mine go, and really, my brother reminded me of it last night. I didn't remember it at all. But uh, we used to play around with all the little settings on the Atari 2600 by, you know, flipping the, the power switch a little in ways you're not supposed to do, and the resets, and similarly the other buttons, and it would do really strange things to the game, like speed it up or turn it different colors it's not supposed to be, and so on and so forth. So technically, that's probably the first game glitches that I would think to recall. <laughs> I remember doing something like that in the Sega Genesis for a Dr. Robotic is Mean Bean Machine. That game had a really weird glitch that, ironically, I cannot recreate anymore. I've tried. I even got a Genesis and tried again, and it wouldn't work. If I wanted to play the final boss, I would simply, randomly during the first fight, I would yank the cartridge out of the Genesis while it was still on. <laughs> and of course, uh, the game, you know, would freeze. And I would put the game back in, and I would reset. And when you go to start the game next time, and it shows the first boss, 
but it doesn't take you to the first boss. It takes you to the final boss. <laughs> and it only worked for that cartridge, apparently, because I could not get it to work again for other ones. And I'm not even exactly sure how I discovered that. I used to just do that, just for fun, see what happened if I did this or that. There are a few games that if you put in one and then put in another, and some of these were CD games, some of these were uh, cartridge games, and of course we do not condone this particular action because it can really screw up your system and oh, your yeah. games, so yeah. you try this stuff, it's on you, man. But uh, the only one that I truly remember working myself was probably one of the simplest ones. Is back on the launch of the PlayStation 1, uh, the racing game Ridge Racer was pretty much the king of the hill, despite how bad it is looking back at it. But it had uh, the ability that basically its entire game would fit on the RAM. So what, you could pull the CD out and continue playing the game normally. It would just not play the music anymore. Therefore, if you put any music CD whatsoever, it would play music from that. The only problem was is it would generally start in the middle of a song and not loop like it's supposed to when it reaches the end. And these are generally about three to five minute races, so you're sitting there with silence and car engines for most of it. But it was still kind of an interesting trick. That is I wouldn't awesome. call that a glitch, but... Oh, it's definitely a glitch. They did not intend that, ever. <laughs> yeah, most of the uh, glitches and stuff back from that era have a lot to do with jiggling the cartridge or removing the disc while it's still running. Mm-hmm. That's why the, uh, the tray, when it became loose and it was worn out, it, that stuff happened a lot more often because it was happening whether you wanted it to or not. <laughs> You're definitely talking about the old NES there. Oh, yeah, that, that, would, that would be the old NES. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of oh, which, yeah. we didn't talk about what your first memory of a glitch was. Uh, it was it was really the color swapping and stuff that happened when you would mess with a uh, NES cartridge. Oh, well, yeah. A lot of times, the tricks that they would tell you to do to get your cartridge to work ended up ruining this stuff later, like blowing in the cartridge. Don't do that. <laughs> Uh, one that I found worked really well for me back in the day without having to blow in the cartridge is to pop the, the tray down and release it, like just keep hitting it so that it's locking and unlocking really quickly. And for whatever reason, that seemed to work for me. Dad always used rubbing alcohol. And he never lets it blow on him. He's like, that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> or putting the game in the NES and then sticking, lodging another game on top of that one. That way it wouldn't, you know, pop up or anything. Oh, yeah, that's that was another one, yeah. It's just like we had to do something similar to that. I don't remember what we threw in there, though. There's only for certain games. Like, I remember Link, uh, a Zelda 2, you had to do that every time. I could not get the game to work unless I did that for my copy. So what about the positively game-breaking bugs that are just from a game being released too early? Well, one that was due to piracy uh, was Titan Quest. I remember that because I uh, pirated it first. <gasps> and uh, <laughs> the game would just crash. I mean, just crash instantly. And it was DRM-related. But earlier crashes, games that would just, things that would break a game were uh, usually just doing something that you should not be able to do and it would usually make the game freak out. And a lot of that can be kind of considered user error. Yeah, exactly. Or just something just randomly freezes. There's a couple of Nintendo games that used to do that too, and Sega games. Sonic did it a couple times. If you can go fast enough, there's a good chance you, the game would just lock up. Usually a power plant zone was the one where that happened. It happened a couple times. He would go so fast that he would go for one of the loopy loops and you would see Sonic fly off the screen and the game would just freeze. You overheated the blast process. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I don't remember too many freezing games back in like the console era, but uh, most of the freezing that I remember wasn't the game's fault. It was that the PlayStation 1, a lot of people forget about this, had about as bad of an overheating problem as the 360 did. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't quite as bad, but uh, I, I used to have quite a few problems, and it was weird. The worst offenders always seemed to be acclaim games. I don't know what it was about them, but the, the acclaim games were like ten times more likely to crash on me. I didn't play that many acclaim games, so... Well, thankfully I didn't either. <laughs> Some weren't very but sometimes, you know, like the Street Fighter, the movie for the PlayStation 1 and stuff like uh, Bust a Move 2. So these were games from other people, but Acclaim published. And for whatever reason, <laughs> still, it was having those same problems. Some of the things I remember for the glitches were single cartridge only glitches that I had a friend. His Street Fighter, you could basically do any move on any character as long as you did it right. The cartridge was f Basically, every character was any character because you could do all the damn moves. How does what? that work, though? Because there are a lot of moves that from one person to the next are the exact same input. That's just it. It was very random at that, too. Because that I sounded like he did something to his game. <laughs> I think I, he had to, like, but this is when we were, like, 12. So it was really weird. And I remember fondly getting the big sumo wrestler guy to start doing that electrical charge like Baraka a couple times. 
of course, the, the animation was just completely wacky. You could oh, see yeah. Baraka's little outline while I was doing it. Blanca. Blanca or whatever, Thank yeah. Blanca. 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 Baraka's from Mortal Kombat, yeah. <laughs> see, that's how much I know about all those. My brains. My brain. The most famous Street Fighter glitch is there's a throw that Guile does that makes you pin him up against the character. I, I don't remember exactly how it works because I never tried it myself, but the other player would not be able to move away, so wherever Guile went, the character would get drug along with him. Oh, that's awesome. Now, I don't know if the, the other player could, you know, like, hit themselves out of it or anything like that, but God could just sit there and do whatever he wanted until he was done. Drag you around. Yeah. Probably the biggest of the game-breaking stuff, aside from freezes, are the stuff that destroys game saves. Yeah. And there's been a lot of those. Oh, Secret of Mana, I had that so many times. It saved everybody to vanish. Hmm. Thankfully, I never had that problem with Mana. It did seem like I had a problem with that with uh, Zelda 3 once. Oh, that'd be torturous. A lot of that supposedly was supposed to have to do with the player taking the cartridge out of the system while the system is still running, or mm -hmm. with the cartridge being moved a little bit while the save file is being created or written over. But Much like the warnings with the memory cards we still have. Yeah. I remember my Super Nintendo had a glitch that was so aggravating. I remember it came to the point that I would just grab this Super Nintendo and slam it on the ground as hard as I could. I mean, well, there's the cause of the glitches. There's right your glitch problem. There's <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the reason we're going off for this Nintendo, I, 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 my parents replaced it eventually. Uh, they actually had Nintendo, and Nintendo was like, you need to bring that in for a look at it, and they brought me, they gave me a new one after we paid something, because they were fascinated, because the games would randomly go black and white, <laughs> and the only way to get it to work was I would pick it up and slam it on the counter, and it would turn back to color, and then about 20 minutes later, it would turn black and white, and I'd have to repeat. <laughs> this is, and it, this went on for like a year. I think it was like Kirby's Avalanche, a game you can't play in black and white, because <laughs> some of the damn things look alike when they're black and white. Oh, yes. yeah. So you have problems. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I have not heard of anybody else that had that problem was uh, a Super Nintendo. You no, know, the closest thing I can think of it is, you know, users turning their, their TVs black and white so their light zapper guns will hit everything on the screen when they're playing those <laughs> Duck Hunt type games. Oh yeah. That's the not really a glitch though. No. Hacks! <laughs> so would you agree with a statement such as game bugs that were not, that couldn't be linked back to the player happened a little bit less before this generation of consoles? Yes. Well, there's more corners rushed, which it seems really strange range considering how they had less test audiences and less game testers and the programming guys were usually smaller groups. There's a lot of games in the NES, Super NES era that was like free programmers. Do you think it might also be because the games back then were a bit more simplistic? Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of it has to do with that, the simplicity of the games back then. It's, it's a lot harder to maybe mess things up versus the game being rushed but people having internet connections so common now that the developers know they can patch anything that's really, you know, broken. Which is a good thing to have the ability to patch. Uh, we were talking about some of this stuff last night about the, some of the corrupted data file things that would happen with like uh, Soul Calibur 3 and the Beautiful Joe 2 demo and uh, more recently with poor little Fez on the 360 with it deleting files and how uh, a lot of the games in the older days, they couldn't be patched. You had to live with those. I mean, I don't recall any game ever getting recalled for a glitch no matter how bad it was. No, no I, I, re I can't remember. Uh, there, were, there were a few that had that where the game did would just randomly disappear and you just had to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Luckily, a lot of them were like a couple hour games where you just have a concession and beat the game. But other ones, I, oh, Earthbound was one that that has a tendency to do that at times. Earthbound? Yeah, Earthbound. Probably anything that either relies on a battery or flash memory or even the more modern memory systems. It's a tricky thing to work with that stuff because it's so volatile. It's always being written and rewritten and usually over the same space over and over and over again. The cartridge version of Earthbound has a very rare DRM bug that, you, you know, the Super Nintendo has DRM in it mm -hmm. to prevent. Well, I think it's more specific uh, region lock. games, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's regional lock, and it has... Uh, have you ever uh, put a game into a Super Nintendo and this weird screen will be spinning and it'll say that this is not a legitimate copy or whatever? I've yeah. had that happen on my PlayStation. But. The, the, it'll happen on yeah. the Nintendo, too. It happens a lot when you put in All-Stars for some reason. Mm. Well, was Earthbound, when you get to the final boss, there is a chance, although extremely rare, I had it happen once, and it, it honestly made me rage harder than I ever have, ever that the game will just bleep and reset. And you're like, okay, what happened? And you go to restart, your file's gone. And this is when you're about to go fight Gygus. It just deletes your file. Wow. 
I never actually had that happen. I'm thank God for you because it happened to me. I, I had played it a couple thousand times before that, but I was just like, where the hell is my? And then I realized what happened when I checked, and I was furious. Sounds like you had a lot of trouble back in the console era. I just had really bad luck with games, and just had some funny bugs too. That Super Nintendo was. I got it. It was like my fifth of Super Nintendo. So that was going to be the other question I asked you because you know if it had that black and white problem. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no that, this was uh, it, this was after that one. That Nintendo also did weird too so a lot of the time i contribute bugs on that one to that just being faulty hardware what can happen it's not always about the the quality of the the device itself i mean a lot of stuff can happen in shipment and during production mm -hmm. flying the ointment type of stuff most of the glitches i remember from like the older days is either where the flicker got so bad the game would freeze which was very rare i can only think a handful of those that did that and uh lots of instances where you'd get like stuck in a wall or where you'd go to a screen and it wouldn't quite go to the screen you'd be like trapped in the wall on the wrong side because the way they did their separate screens back in those days. Uh, mm -hmm. You see it a lot in the I Want to Be the Guy fan games. So uh, you can kind of see how easy that stuff happens. I remember in Zelda 1 sometimes that could happen. Matter of fact, there's a really famous exploit on at least two of the Zeldas taking advantage of that. Uh, Link's Awakening especially, you can beat the entire game really quickly because there's one that allows you to back out of the screen and it like warps you backwards as far as you want to go mm -hmm. you catch and die. You can basically walk for the game data and walk into the Ganon room and go up to the Triforce immediately. <laughs> I didn't know it was that bad, but yeah. It takes about a minute and a half to walk over to it. And what's awesome is while it's going on, you can't interact with anything in the rooms. You can see it, but it's like you're walking underneath it. Mm -hmm. But you can go for the doors, and so you just find the doors of the final Ganon battle walkthrough, and then you beat the game. I think you have to do an inventory pause or something like that to get yourself out of it. I don't remember. Uh, the trick, I can't but... remember what you have to do. To... It's just, once you do it, you can basically beat the game and like 35 seconds.